Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, yesterday I got up in the morning, came in to make a cup of coffee, and I had a big puddle in front of my Samsung dishwasher. Well, being the person that I am, I'm not going to hire anybody to, to fix anything. And from my research, what I'm finding out, just to get a house call for a service guy to come out, you're looking at 150 bucks. If there's any parts, it skyrockets quickly to time and materials to as much as these things are to replace them. So most of the service technicians say, just replace it. This was an expensive unit. I mean, this was $750 five years ago. For a Samsung, five years from what I'm reading, that's actually pretty good. I, I went a long time before it sprung a leak. A lot of these are leaking within a year out of warranty. Of course, out of warranty. So I cleaned up the puddle and decided, all right, I, I'll pull this out and see if I can figure out where it's leaking from. Disconnected the water line, disconnected the power, disconnected the drain hose. I set it here in the middle of the floor. I put it up on two by four blocks so that I could see underneath it and I ran it through a complete cycle, not a drop. There's a little catch pan on the bottom of this unit that has a sensor in it. Mine didn't have any water in it. That sensor is what gives the LC code you might see a lot of. And if yours has the LC code, it's the leak check mode that the system goes through. Mine didn't trip that. So where did the water come from? It, we hadn't used the dishwasher probably for a couple of days. So there was nothing through a cycle that created this puddle. So like I say, I've got it sitting in the middle of the floor. I've got it up on blocks. I ran it through a complete cycle, not a drop. I let it sit here four or five hours on the blocks, not a drop. Okay, maybe the line was leaking and it was just dripping and running down the line. I didn't see it when I pulled it out. And so I figured, well, it's the only thing it could have been. Could have been the drain hose, could have been the water line, but just needed to be tightened up, put everything back together, went downstairs to watch TV, came back up, stepped in a puddle. So I'm going to try again, and I clean up the puddle, and I turned off the water line, and I went back downstairs. <laughs> came back up just before bedtime, another big puddle. Just didn't make any sense. There was that much water with the line off. So I decided to maybe run it through a cycle and see if maybe something opened up uh, and it, it tripped when I installed everything back in. I just need to cycle it. Cycle it on, cycle it off. It won't come on. Turn on the power, I get an LC check and it's beeping. I can't make it stop. So there's obviously water in the leak detector tray and the switch that's in the bottom of the tray. So this time there's water in the bottom and all over the floor. <laughs> So it got me thinking this morning when I get up and there's another big puddle right here. There can't be. The water line was shut off. So I'm going to start with taking that water line off. And if the water is coming out of that line, then that means my valve isn't completely shutting off. And then maybe it's the valve on front of this machine. It appears to be off, but my garbage disposal is on the same breaker. And so is my light. So I know the power's off. This particular dishwasher happens to be attached to the cabinet through the sides. And it has a little plastic cover, just a little plastic piece, and there's a Phillips head screw in there. So you can look at each one of these to see where the screw is. But another way to tell where that screw is, just pull this seal back. There's a rubber seal on the sides. And I can see the screw head right there into a little metal flap. And I can see that it's a Phillips head. Now, these screws, when you back them out, 
could possibly fall down inside here. And I've had one fall down and fall all the way to the floor. And I had another one that fell down and just flat vanished. So, so just to keep track of the screws and also I don't have anything r rattling around anywhere, I use a magnet to finish backing them out. Plus the magnet helps to get them back in. This has to snake around the back as well as the hose. So depending on whether you disconnect the hose from <laughs> this valve or from the front. I just connected the front here because I wanted to see if it was leaking. Typically, yesterday, <laughs> I disconnected it from there so I could pull the whole thing out. Now, doing my research, I've heard that people are taking this side panel off, putting a little turkey baster in there, and sucking all the water out of that bottom tray. Well, that's if you're just getting a little bit of condensation and moisture that's getting in that bottom tray and, and tripping the sensor. No reason for me to do that here. As much water as I'm getting underneath, there's definitely a leak. But now this puddle is forming again. And, like I've mentioned before, this has been turned off for 24 hours. Where's this water coming from? So it's got to be water that's settled in the bottom of this machine, or in the pump, or something like that. So there is water dripping out from under this tray. To remove this tray, there's little clips around the edges. But be careful removing it that you don't damage the wires to the sensor. There's the sensor. And there's the moisture that's goofing up my sensor. Let's get that sensor out of the way before I damage it. When I was looking underneath this machine yesterday, before I pulled it out the first time, the moisture was right here. So it was leaking somewhere in this area over the edge of that tray. The tray didn't have water in it. So just before I pulled this out, there was quite a puddle there. If there was anything leaking from this pump, I would be expecting to still see some moisture there. I'm just not seeing anything. Sometimes this catch basin where the pump and everything goes in, there's a seal around that, and this is a stainless steel bowl, so that seal can break loose. And it lets grime and gunk come down through it. And I'm not seeing anything around that seal, any signs that that seal leaks. I'm tempted to just start removing everything, but I also suspect this valve might be leaking on the opposite side, whatever trips that valve to let the water into the machine. That's possible as well. I'm not feeling any moisture on the back side of this area. There's a lot of tubes and hoses that go into the, to the jackets and the moving parts where the water is sprayed all inside. There's an access panel to the back side of that. I'm going to stand this back up, take off that access panel and see if I can see anything inside of there. I do not see any possibility of moisture that has leaked in this area. With the exception of right in here, maybe there was a little bit of condensation that dripped down the back of this and, and left a little bit of residue, but it's so dry in there, I just don't think it was from this particular puddling problem. All right, I've got it freestanding. I've got everything hooked up. Check the water line, no leaks. If you're doing this, be really careful with your, your power supply. Not that it's exposed. I checked it all. I made sure nothing can short out. I'm going to flip the breaker on, run this thing through a cycle, and hope for the best.
Okay, so far so good. It's powering up. Everything looks normal. No LC code. I'm going to run it through a normal cycle. Hit the start button. Let's see what happens. That was looking good. I didn't put it on risers this time, so I can't see under it. But the puddle is always so big, it should be pretty obvious. So while I've got this running through a cycle, I decided to take this side off uh, so I have access to all of these hoses to see if there's any leakage around here. Uh, you can see where I had my hand up inside there trying to feel for moisture. Uh, it would have been a better idea to take this off because now I've disturbed all of that nice dust. But right underneath that valve right there, that's the inlet valve. And there is a little puddle under it. I don't see the puddle growing. Um, it almost looks like the puddle uh, was just from me moving this thing around. So I'm going to get a paper towel in there and dry it and then see if that drips or reoccurs. I'll take the other side off and check the pump itself and the pump housing. Okay, now that it has come to an end and all the water is out of the tank, this was a great test to check and look through everything. Uh, there is a piece there. I need to check and make sure that is sealed. Not exactly sure what that is, but... We'll get in there and check it. And I was able to get this side off and get back in to the back side of the pump and all the hoses in here and I don't find any leaks in that area either. You can kind of see the back side. All the connections are. So to remove this pump so I can check and make sure there's nothing inside the impeller area, this needs to be twisted clockwise. Got to turn it pretty snug. It'll feel like something's going to break, but it does come off. Slides out of place. It's all clean on this side. It's all clean on that side. Has an excellent seal. So I don't see anything there that makes me think this was leaking so place it back in line everything up give it a good twist so it appears there might be one more sensor behind here so i'm going to take this metal panel off and see if i can get access to that okay so i got uh, that panel off and now i have access to that little sensor I'm going to pull that one out and clean it, and I don't see any potential of leakage around that one either. I'm going to remove this sensor. I'm sure it has something to do with the filter. Maybe there's a sealed unit that might be needing cleaning. Make sure you get the seal back on. So I was about to start putting all this back together and I was looking at this canister. I'm not sure what this is. It almost looks like a heater unit or something. And there's a little bowl area right here and it's full of really gunky, rusty moisture. So, as I'm probing around here and I'm lifting this up, I can see the underneath side of that. This just might be my leak. Because that shouldn't be all grungy looking.
Okay. I think this just may be the culprit because it almost looks like it's it has rusty stains on it. There's no metal there that could actually rust, but there's a little bit of a bowl area right here, and that area is, is full of gunky, old, dirty water. The water has since dried up, so I don't know if it's something that was recent or if that's been a while back. But I'll look, see if there's any seal in here that looks like it might have been able to leak and maybe I can reseal it. I'm not sure what this is. It could be heaters. So it appears this is another one of those where you just twist it and it comes apart. Wow. That is nasty in there. Oof. And it stinks. Yeah, I gotta get this in the sink. This O-ring is in excellent shape. It was filthy, but I didn't see any potential leak areas. <clears throat> the seat looks excellent. So this goes that way. This goes this way. Alright. I wish there was a way I could pressure test this. <laughs> but it definitely needed to be cleaned out. It was horrible inside. Okay, so there's a connection on the back. Okay, this is all ready to go back together. I'm just going to throw the side panels back on, set the bottom back on, slide it in place and hook everything up. So there's something else I want to check on this unit just to make sure everything is sealed up. This filter system has a row of screws that go around the outside. Uh, it takes a Torx head screwdriver. I just want to go around and make sure they're all snug. I don't have anything uh, working loose. to report that it's been a few days and there has not been any surprise puddles underneath the dishwasher. Uh, there is one thing though that I found online that I, I want to point out. This piece, they have a tendency to leak and there's a seal in there and it has something to do with the steam and how it cycles and, and is in the drying process. So I took that apart to clean it because there's a diaphragm in there and surprise I have this little zip tie piece that showed up. Uh, pretty odd, can't imagine why that was in there. Had to have something to do with when this was built I guess. But we'll wipe this down. Get it put back together. Thank you for watching this episode. Uh, another one of the unexpected projects taken care of. Don't exactly know why it was leaking, but taking everything apart, cleaning all the seals, putting it back together. You can see um, if you're having this kind of an issue, there's a pretty good possibility you could do the same thing and save a fairly expensive unit. No reason to be running out and buying another one or calling a service guy to come out. You can do it yourself. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye for now.